Good morning. Um, I would like to introduce our speaker, uh, Eckhart Brennans, and he's the team leader from XFAB Lab. I think you were going to tell a little bit more about yourself. I'm, I'm very excited to have this session because um, I think sample preparation is very important at large and there's not enough talks and opportunity to talk about the sample preparation and um, and Eckhart was uh, kind enough to introduce us sample preparation workflow in connection with our tool and without connection to, into our tool just different things so I hope we will inspire a little bit of discussion here we are limited to 30 minutes so in case this goes beyond the time allowed, then you can come back for a demo later. We will we will have demo all day long, so the demo can be done later. But this is a very special opportunity for this talk. So I want you to take your time and answer questions. And if we need to do demo, we can do demo all day long. Each one of you can come one by one, and we will have a one-on-one -on -one demo. Okay? So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Eva. Thanks for the opportunity to share my experience with this uh, beautiful tool. Uh, I have to say all things that I will show here are depend on my lab and uh, depend on our requirements. Probably you have different requirements and must adapt these results to your needs. Uh, we have bought the system half year ago, so the time is not so long to present so much samples, uh, therefore my presentation is uh, only limited, but I hope for the future. <coughs> In the FA flow is uh, the first question, uh, which method is the best for sample cross-sectioning in the FA lab? Uh, depend on the, quest, the further question how material is given. Uh, XFAB is a wafer FAB, uh, especially for um, mixed signal wafers. And uh, we are dealing daily in my lab with wafers, but we get also from automotive field returns back, and then we have only one die or one device. So the question is quite different. The material composition, the structures and the layers are also very important for choice the right method. And not forget the purpose for cross-section. This is for sample handling. For example, you want to have samples 5, 10, 10 millimeters. Or it's for target preparation. Here you need uh, precision of uh, 200 micrometer for example. The goal is in all, cas uh, all cases fast, precise and uh, uh, <coughs> cleave to allow or to give high quality micrographs. <coughs> Some words more for XFAB. XFAB offer is a wafer FAB. We have uh, different fabs, two in Germany, or three in Germany now, one in Kuching, Malaysia, and one in Lubbock, Texas. And uh, depend on the uh, location, we offer different, different technologies. As in the meantime, mixed signal technologies. We in Erfurt, especially, we offer also uh, trench or SOI technologies. We have polyimide processes, we have TSV processes, we made MEMS structures and special MEMS processes. Here we have membranes, we have TSV, we have different kind of cavities and we use wafer bonding. Some micrographs for illustration, this is an SOI trench process, this is a copper TSV first samples from grinding. There are membrane structures, pressure sensors, acceleration sensors, strain gauge sensors. 
some structures from the scribe line. Some more pictures. We have wafers with cavities from the backside. Okay. Uh, we have thorn wafer with uh, extended fat metal on the top side. We had quartz wafer. We have filigrane membranes on the top side. This is thermopile sensor. Isolation sensor is tech of three different wafer materials. And this is the same device from the back side. So I want to say so are we dealing with uh, gyroscopes? And here I have a sample for extended resist layer with uh, only open quad pads for further gold deposition. So I want to show you we have many different layers materials and layouts to cleave. In my lab in Erfurt, we use cleaving for wafer breaking for further preparation. This is our daily fail analysis work. For example, for further delayering by parallel polishing top down, or for sample handling, 8 inch wafers are hardly to use under SEM and FIB. Uh, we execute cross-section preparation for special point of interest and we make also sample preparation to allow access to special investigation tools. We are especially high magnification SEM Hitachi S5200 which allow 5 times 10 millimeters at maximum size. Some pictures for illustration use for parallel polishing the light micro polisher and here is also uh, very important that the samples are not so extended. We use for example Gatan for sample coating, also very small sample chamber for coating or our S5200 in lens SEM that has special sample holder with very very limited space for the sample. For the cleaving accuracy, many years we used only manually cleaving. This gives us an accuracy from 100 150 micrometer, like a bond pen. Yeah? That means manually cleaving you can meet a bond pen, not more. Then we get the Sela MC600. Sela MC600 is a micro cleaving tool and, and allow two kinds of cleaving. You can with a single cleave very fast get accuracy of 20 micrometer in six, six minutes. If you spend 15 minutes more, you can get with a full process one micrometer. This is very precise and yeah, it's a very good uh, tool. And now as the AX300 is situated here. That means we can introduce this in our flow very, very good. But keep in your mind, backside grinding, sawing, polyimide, trenches, SOI, MEM structures, all special layer constructions like uh, six metal or fat metal on the top side decrease the claiming accuracy till the impossibility. That's our problem. I say it's like MC600, they have a PCM tool for pre cleaving with a PCM tool in combination with pliers and the diamond detender, you can in very short time divide the whole wafer and separate stripes and, and uh, samples as you want. And 
the, uh, or now I want to speak a little bit about the difference between Sela PCM tool and this uh, AX300. They look like the same, but they have one decision, uh, one important difference. The Letter Skier AX300 makes the intender on the top side. The uh, PCM tool from Sela uh, has the intender to the side always. This is an important difference. And we can use it. Some examples from our lab for the usage of this cleaving. Here we have uh, trenches around 50 micrometers. You see very fast, very clean. It's a very good way to, to create cross-section. Uh, with a couple of years power, it's very, very hard because we have a thick copper on the top side, partially filled TSVs. This was a picture from the developing and normally only to get by cross-section drinking. In this case, we have also published here in the uh, Atfas magazine. We tried to cleave it with a 300 The results uh, have surprised us because we have made the whole TSV in one, also in one row. We have made any TSV in the middle through. This was very beautiful. And the advantage was because we have a thick copper on the top side, uh, we have pulled out the sample, so we had two views on one TSV. In the middle is the top side cover, and now you can decide the right side, left side, what you want to see. Uh, if you compare this picture, you have, you have the cover from the top side, uh, only one side, and then comes here, and here is the end of the cover, always. This is not good. This was with a 300 this is a further, uh, further uh, example, deep trenches, greater than 200 micrometer. This was very fast and uh, here was a problem to investigate the edges on the top side. It was very good to see. Further example, the monitoring of TSV after etching and oxide deposition. It was also possible very fast, we meet the raw and we can have very clean um, edges that allow us to measure the oxide thickness or to investigate the bottom of the hole if the metal structures are free for further connection. First example with A300, bonded wafer. Here we have an example, silicon on glass. We have intended on the silicon and the uh, cross-section was all possible without any problems. The glass has followed the information from the crystal silicon. Now I want to speak a little bit how we combine this AX300 with our other methods, with the following results. Here we had the task to cleave only single dies. We had only single dies. How to handle single dies? Not so not so easy. We use the AX300 to create the impact to the top side and we use Sela PCM to hold this or set up this with tweezers in the Sela PCM. You see here. And to create the intention from the side. Because the die has also the information from the top side, the impacts, and then it was possible leave it in such a way, here is a result, not so nice, but we have meet the center of the die and uh, <laughs> we were happy. The next time we had the requirements, okay, determine the thickness of the membrane only from one special die from the wave. Okay, how to uh, handle with this? We decided to make the wafer sawing in such a way that we create stripes 
and the stripe has a target die in the middle and left and right side two additional dies for handling, handling and cleaving. Therefore we can we have cleaved this with AX300 not only because we have a lot of stripes, it was possible to cleave it and the results is a little bit better than before. Uh, some weeks ago we got the further tool from Lattice Gear as I say, a small sample cleaver. Here first results with this tool. This is Only one die again, this is an integrated pressure sensor. We have had the indentation with the X300 with this tool. You see here the, the impact. Then we go to the SSC tool, the alignment, cleaving, and this is the results. You see it that's from one side. This is very good. For the micrographs, you see only a small part of the die is damaged by the indentation and not more. And you see is a very excellent picture of the membrane thickness in all positions that you want for meat. So, now I come to the conclusion. The X300 is a helpful tool at our daily work. Further advantages are given at special technologies like TSV, bonded wafer or special MEMS structures. Especially in combination with another tools like sawing, SSC, for Sailor PCM, excellent results are given in a very short time. Many thanks to my colleagues from the team Fehler and Leises in Erfurt and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about cost reduction? Yeah. It was very interesting to hear cost reduction. Okay. Um, following of usage of this, also at first, uh, the cost of this tool is not so expensive. The second part is if we have, uh, we, we have now to compare with the cost for MC600. MC600 has costs for service contract, okay, we need service, especially for cleaving tools. Yeah? So the most point for cleaving tools is cleaning and uh, new setup of all operation parameters. This is absolutely necessary. But further costs uh, will be given by uh, the knives. The knives are like uh, very expensive. A knife, I think, 500 euro is necessary, and you have the, the, the capacity of the knife is limited to 100 and 150 times. You have two uh, kind of knives for instance 600. And uh, now we use more and more this tool, and so we spare the capacity for instance 600 uh, knives and service as well. Yeah. You have uh, with an annual contract, we have you have two. Uh, service um, uh, visitors, visitings and a third in the emergency case but not more and if you use it in very extend, uh, excessive way you need more this would be probably not enough and uh, the cost is one thing for our lab is more important the uh, avail availability of the, of the tool yeah? We, we, we are pro, uh, production, we have a production process and if I say to my chief, okay, the tool is down, I make, I have ordered the service, so it comes end of the week and next week I will start with the fail analysis, this is too long. Yeah. And so uh, this tool here has also so improve the availability of cross-section um, cross execution and reduce also the effort for any another tool.
is important, important thing. I want to add the following: a, a normal, also a directly cross section uh, by cleaving is, in most cases, the best way to get good pictures, because uh, any other operations like rinding, like staining, like film, also change the sample in such a way that you have not always better pictures. Mostly, you have uh, worse of pictures, and this is a this is a problem. Okay, so this is uh, not our product, okay? okay? We just wanted, but he was relating to the Latisex uh, 300, which is the, that this package here, it's including the Latisex as a base unit, and then you have the vision system, which is the mono, the CCD, color CCD camera, the fiber optic illumination gives a resolution down to about 5 microns and you have the whole box of uh, stages that hold the latisex to its place so when you move it, you, move, you can move it in microns so that really gives the ability, two abilities one is to be able to see the target down to the 5 micron resolution but the other, as important, is to place the tip of that diamond on the desired target. Because you can put this under a stereoscope, gives you the ability to see, but it doesn't allow you to align the, where you make the indentation with the target, right? So it's not enough just to see, you also have to predict where the cleave is gonna go. So the combination is for that. Now, he was talking about small samples. So um, in order to, the, the process is indentation first, and then cleaving. The cleaving is a three-point cleave. And so you have one pin under the, under the indentation and two pins coming from the top. Now, that distance defined minimum sample size, right? And that is 10 millimeter. So that was not enough for single dies. And so for that, we came up with the small sample cleaver. The small sample cleaver is basically the tool to use post-indentation when your sample is small, as small as four millimeter, and you want to get it down to two millimeter, okay? So that that brings the uh, operation down to the full full um, size. And this addition here, it's just an addition, gives you the maximum size, which is 300 millimeter. So we do not encourage you to start cleaving by hand. We actually say, start from a full wafer on here, because then you create a perfect cleave and subsequent cleaves are going to be good, right? Because they are affecting one another. Um, but on the other hand, there are some times that you get a sawed wafer. You get a sawed piece and you have to leave with sawing. You have to leave with odd, awkward shapes. Then you can accommodate that with the small ones. Okay? Um, if you have any more question for flow, sample prep flow experiences, um, we are very, very fortunate that uh, you came because it's nice to hear case studies. Case studies, I mean, telling about a tool is one thing, but just hearing how, com how you combine between tools to... I'm convinced, uh, let us use this tool one year more then I have much more, more acceptance. More <laughs> um, uh, I have numbered. Uh, we have uh, since a half year used in 12 cases this tool, uh, exceptionally. And uh, yeah, this is a statistic. We are dealing with 700 um, issues per year, approximately. So it's only to give you a feeling. On the other hand, if you have a new tool for your colleagues, they start to use the old tools, yes? And then you have to convince them to try with a new tool, it's better. Okay, I use the old. And so it's a hardly work to, to uh, 
uh, to bring them the advantages of new tools. And, uh, if I walk up to the tool with a 300 millimeter wafer, how long would it take me to get to a final cleave sample? It really depends where it is, so you need to plan. Ten and so, what is your final size? Because it depends how many cleaves. Each cleave takes about a minute or so. And, and I think you, you need mostly time to, to think about your plan. How do you cleave the wafer? Okay, also depend on the orientation. Yeah, if you have not one zero zero orientation, you have this. This is much harder. Also, so I would then you can not meet in ten minutes. Yeah, but here you, I would say ten minutes. Yeah, you make your samples. And um, import, one important issue I have for, forgotten to say: in ninety percent in our lab, ninety percent. All cases are 20 micrometers or 15 micrometers to the target enough. Because if you want to continue with FIB, 20 micrometers okay. You start from the side and then further 15 minutes, 20 minutes you, you have your target, meet your target, outgoing from the sample. Therefore it's very important to have a, uh, uh, to have a possibility to create such fast cleaving in a very short time. And I think that you also uh, show the other type of samples. The samples we, we typically say are not cleavable and we will go and think, okay, we can only polish. Uh, you show the glass, you show the mems, you a... show the compound of the three wafers, uh, combine all those things that we think crystalline is not oriented, there is no crystal, there is amorphous, it's not gonna work. And it does. Um, and we believe that the reason that it does cleave the non cleavable is because of the indentation. The, the indentation here is a very powerful uh, part of the process. It is a micro indentation. You have a 10 micron width indentation, one millimeter from the very edge. That means that it is so powerful, it's a powerful weak point, and it can initiate one direction of a cleave, even in when you have a three mems of a three uh, wafers bonded to each other or glass with silicon. Um, so it's not, it, you, you, you don't need to think in the terms of, okay, I have this perfect 100 silicon square piece, it fits. No, it can be different shapes, round. Different material. Also, especially MEMS developer are very, very creative <laughs> in relationship to new layers, new <laughs> layouts, and any other things. Um, no more questions. Are your slides going to be available on the Lattice Gear website or are they required here? We're going to upload it on YouTube and we can send you the link on YouTube. Okay. All right, so I thank you very much for coming early at nine o'clock. If anyone wants to stay, we can run a demo. Thank you very much.